Okay, we're on page five. I think there are seven pages. Okay, so number 13 here is another um, variation problem. Radiation machines used to treat tumors produce an intensity of radiation that varies inversely. Okay, so we've got intensity. I'm going to use a capital I for intensity. And I'm going to have a K, but it'll be over something. So <laughs> that's the varies inversely. K over, okay, what is it inverse? very inversely as the square of the distance. So we're going to put distance squared, the square, not the square root, the square of the distance from the machine. Okay, so there's our um, formula basics, the relationship. Now we're going to find K at three meters. Okay, that would be the distance. K over three squared. I've got to square the three. The radiation intensity is 62. 0.5 milliroangens. I'm sorry, I don't know that word. I'm not a medical person. Per hour. Okay, that's the intensity though. Okay. Um, so we're going to figure out K now. So you have 62.5 equals K over 9. So to solve for K, you're going to multiply by 9 on both sides. And you're going to get K to be... Um, I did it on a calculator. I got 562.5. Yeah, so I would just leave it that way as a decimal. Okay, so now your formula becomes I equals 562.5 over distance squared. Now, they're either going to tell us the distance and we figure out the intensity, or they're going to tell us the intensity and we have to figure out the distance. We'll see what the question says. What is the intensity at a distance of 2.5 meters? Okay, so they tell us the distance, yay, and it's 2.5, okay? Oops, I got to square it. Don't forget that. That's the part I'm worried about you forgetting too. Okay, 2.5 squared. Now, you can do this on a calculator. You can do it all at once, or you can do it in pieces. A lot of times students like to do it in pieces. 2.5 squared winds up being 6.25. And then you're going to go ahead and um, do that division. And you get I equals 90. Now, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do, because this is important, is you put the units. And it's 90. So how did they measure um, intensity? It was that word I couldn't pronounce. Milli. I can't even spell it. <laughs> I'm sure there's an abbreviation somewhere. Per hour. You could write per hour too. Okay, so that's going to be your answer. All right. So we don't have to know everything about uh, what it's talking about. We just have to be able to follow the directions and the form and stuff like that. Okay. Graph the functions. Now, these are exponential functions. So this comes from um, chapter four. I think it's 4.1. So uh, you can make a table of values here. And I would just put in numbers like um, probably negative 1, 0, 1, 2, even 3s. Oh, no, I want, I want more negatives this time. Negative 1, negative 2. Well, I'll just do it like that. So it's kind of out of order there. But if I put in negative 1, that's going to reciprocal it, and I'm going to get 2. And if I put in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. If I put in 1, I get 1 half. If I put in negative 2, so negative 2, I'll write this one out for you, 1 half to the negative 2. So you're going to reciprocal 2 to the positive 2, so you're going to get 4. And if you wanted to do negative 3, you're going to get 8. Okay, so now graphing those, negative 1, 2, that's there, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1 half, so you see how it's getting closer to the x-axis as we move to the right? Negative 2, 4, it's going to be up there. And negative 3, 8, it's shooting up very quickly. Okay. So this is an example of an exponential curve where the base is between 0 and 1 is what's happening. Okay, so that's that. Now think about what you know about transformations. What does that minus 4 do? It's going to move everything 4 to the right. Okay, so I'm going to just pick up all those points and move them over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4.
and so it's going to look like that okay so just do your best and um that's what we get all right expand and simplify the logarithmic expression so in the lo chapter on logarithms that's one of the things they asked us to do okay so this is a common log because there's no base specified it's just log so it has multiplication going on here so we split up multiplication into two separate logs so log 10 you can put parentheses that's up to you plus log x to the fourth um, so that splits up the multiplication now two things to simplify first of all the base is the same so it's like a little 10 here we don't write it when it's a common log but that's like 10 and when the base uh, is the same as the argument this is called the argument then when those are the same it just equals one and that's one of our basic properties property is log base b of v equals one okay when we have an exponent here we can bring that down in front so that's the um, power property of logarithms so you're going to have four log x and again you can put the x in parentheses or not that's up to you okay so that's how it simplifies we've expanded it and we've simplified it we've broken it down into what we can all right the last one here wants us to condense so now we're going to do it the opposite way we're going to put it all back together so these coefficients in front of the log will go back up as exponents and so I'm going to write it this way natural log it's a base e so it's a natural log x to the third plus natural log y to the one fourth and I'll deal with that in a minute minus natural log z to the fifth power okay now when we're condensing if you're adding then it's going to go in the numerator if you're multiplying or if you're subtracting <laughs> it's going to go in the denominator okay so subtractions indicate in division and addition indicates multiplication so we have one natural log now and it's going to be x cubed y to the one fourth over z to the fifth because that's one that was being subtracted the z to the fifth so that's got to go in the denominator we have written it as one logarithm there's just one more thing i'm going to do because they usually do this i'm going to write natural log i do want the parentheses x cubed when we have a fraction for an exponent usually with the logarithms they put it back in radical notation so they would write this as the fourth root of y and then it'll still be over z to the fifth so they would probably write it this way okay so hopefully that's a review of some of the properties of x uh, um, logarithms so you'll want to study those there are eight properties we're going to do um, change of base in another problem